This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Recently, my friend and fellow YouTuber, Ed Thorne, mentioned to me that he was thinking of migrating from Logic Pro to Studio One. And having looked through this channel, he couldn't find any videos about why he should do that. And I thought rather than give my reasons, I would ask my audience why they moved to Studio One from their previous door. I'm going to tell you your top five answers, of course, in reverse order, finishing off with the most popular answer. But before we get into that top five, let's talk about which doors you mainly came from. People have come to Studio One pretty much from all of the other major doors, but there were three that stood out more than any others in your comments. Let's look at those in reverse order. At number three was Pro Tools. Now Pro Tools is of course regarded as the industry standard, the door that you're most likely to find in professional studios. But many of you have become disenchanted with it over the years because of cost, the way that they've charged for the product and the actual product itself. There's a feeling that Avid have become complacent, taking their users for granted and not really had the door keep up with its competitors in terms of features and workflow. Now at number two was Cubase. I was a little surprised to hear with Cubase that a lot of you had had issues with stability. Now I'm not sure whether that's mostly on PC or Mac because Cubase is cross-platform just like Studio One, but this was a comment that came up quite often. Now, the number one door that most of you came from was Cakewalk Stroke Sonar. Now, a lot of this happened a few years ago when Sonar's future became uncertain after Gibson had some financial issues and announced that it was no longer going to be updating it or, or improving it. So a lot of you at that time felt uncertain and a little bit jaded that you just bought licenses, etc., and you looked for another door back then. But also, recently with Cakewalk's current owner BandLab announcing a few months ago that they were going to go from a free version to a paid version, a lot of you again have felt uncertain about the product and decided to try out Studio One. Interestingly, a lot of this has happened because of the instability of the company rather than the door itself. Number five of your top five reasons to migrate to Studio One was hardware integration. And I feel like I can really vouch for this because on my sister channel, Creative Source, I review a lot of different hardware control services MIDI keyboards, MIDI keyboards with transport controls and audio interfaces all spring to mind and I've had no problems whatsoever integrating these things with Studio One. Now I want to quickly mention as well with this, it's not quite hardware integration, but also I use my iPad a lot with Studio One and I use the app which you can see on it now which is the Studio One remote control. It's a free app from Presonus and it's got a lot of really deep features on there so that you can control your Studio One session on your computer remotely. This is really useful if you're stuck behind a drum kit or perhaps you're a guitar player or sitting down in your position ready to track and you need to control your door and you can't be near your computer. Super easy to use and set up and I use it pretty much all the time. And number four, we have cost. Now, Studio One is neither the cheapest nor the most expensive door on the market. It sits somewhere in between. So I'm guessing for you, it was all about value for money. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can actually get hold of it. You can just buy it outright in the traditional way. The current version costs 399 US dollars or you can get it on the subscription model with something called Studio One Plus. That costs $19.99 per month. You'll always have the most up-to-date version of Studio One, plus you get the notation software as well and their full catalog of plugins, as well as a few other bits and pieces. It's definitely worth checking out that out, even if you're a little adverse to subscription models. And number three, we have features. Now, this is an interesting one 
done because I don't think it's that Studio One necessarily has features that are completely unique to it that no other doors have. I think it's the fact that it has so many features all in one product. Whether you are composing, recording, mixing, mastering, wanting to use your door for live shows, etc., you can find it all in this one product. Now, I did get the feeling that some of you missed some of the features of your previous door, but you stuck with Studio One because overall you found its feature set to be really great collection of things that you'll need through the production process. Now, I will mention quickly that I do think there is one feature which is still unique to Studio One, and it's been around for a long time now, and that is the project page. This is a space in Studio One completely dedicated to mastering. I use it all the time for my mastering. I kind of can't believe that other doors haven't adopted it, but there it is. And number two, we have stability. Now, as I mentioned earlier, several of you commented that Cubase was quite unstable for you. And a few of you also mentioned the same with Pro Tools. And this became so annoying to you, you just wanted to try out another door and you seem to have been happy with Studio One. Now I can say in my personal experience that I use Studio One on both PC and Mac. And by the way, it's lovely to be able to transfer files from both of those uh, platforms and systems and do it seamlessly. But anyway, I use both and I very rarely experience crashes with Studio One. Now, all doors will have crashes and often they're actually caused by third-party plugins in my experience. But I will say with Studio One, it happens to me around about I'm maybe once or twice a year and I use it pretty much every day. Now, before we look at our number one reason, which I have to say was the most overwhelming reason that you gave, I'd like to remind you that if you follow that VIP link in the description down below for our sponsor, DistroKid, you'll get 7% off right away with your sign up. DistroKid is awesome if you want to get your music out to the major platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Google Play, etc. Super easy to use and super cheap already, even without that discount. So by far the number one reason that most of you gave for switching to and sticking with Studio One was workflow. It seems that most of you feel that Studio One does things in a really kind of slick, smooth way and the way you'd expect things to be done. Now, I have a theory that it has just enough in common with other doors to seem somewhat familiar, but does things more in the way you would expect it to. So I'd encourage you, if you're new to Studio One and you're trying it out, just try to do things in an intuitive way, not necessarily in the way that your old door used to do them. Now, if that fails, check out the manual or better still, check out the videos on this channel here. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'd love for you to subscribe and for you to like this video and I'll see you in the next video.